what we're doing is collecting information on companies. So how many of you, quick show of hands, I know what the answer is going to be, have experienced that thought that, wow, this company that I'm doing business with is tracking me somehow. Maybe something's popped up on the screen that you were, had just visited a different site or something was mailed to you and saying, no, look, the only way they know that is if they had been watching me, right? I mean, everybody's experienced that, right? Yeah, it's scary what these guys are doing. What if we could turn the tables on them a little bit and watch them as much or maybe more than they're watching you? Everybody think that'd be a pretty good idea, right? And maybe apply some of what we know about them in the same ways they're applying it to you, right? So what we're going to talk about today here is, is what we call business signals. Business signals is the DNA of a company. Imagine a company being measured on thousands of different metrics, right? Everything from their operations to their finances to who they do business with to their supply chain to their social, everything it is, right? You take all of those metrics together, you string them together, in aggregate you get the DNA of a company, right? You get a representation of that company. If you look at that one single link on that DNA strand, it becomes pretty interesting. Are they growing? Do they sell online? Are they socially responsible? Imagine those metrics being put aside, thousands of other metrics sort of like them, right? So now all of a sudden you can compare two companies together. You can say, I want one that's growing and sells online, and I really want one that's socially responsible, right? Now, I don't know how you do that today. You probably do it by gut feeling, or maybe you picked up some instinct from something you read. But now, in the future, we can do this online. We can do this uh, automatically, and that's what I'm going to try to show here. This is a product that I'm involved with called Avention. Avention sits on top of a database of about 25 million global companies. 25 million global companies that we track thousands of those business signals for for each of those companies, right? Now, why do we do this? The market today for this is that businesses deal with businesses, right? You've heard the term B2B. Well, B2B means that as a business is doing business with another business, they have to know about them, right? They really want to know uh, who that company is, how they do business, what they do business uh, around, who they do business with. And in some cases, the companies will tell you it's more important for them to know who they're doing business with on a B2B level than maybe the tracking they do on the B2C level, if that makes sense. So there is an industry around understanding your business partners, right? So what Avention does is it keeps this database of business signals on 25 million of the, of the world's most important companies, and that's almost all the companies. That covers everything from the multinationals down to the corner uh, uh, grocery store on your corner, right? And with this, you can slice and dice this data however you want. Remember those D, that DNA? We can go in and slice it and put it together however we want. So what I'm going to do, and by the way, you know I'm going to earn your uh, respect on experience because I think I'm the only one doing the demo or doing the presentation with reading glasses on today. <clears throat> See here, I'm going to type in the word fracking, for example. Everybody knows what fracking is, right? So what this system just did is it went into that database in real time of 25 million companies, looked, as that Charlie said, all of the business articles, all the filings, all the website changes, all the social interactions, and it pulled the context out around fracking of this is a, con this is a conversation around fracking, this is an article about fracking, this is a filing around fracking. It pulls all that together in real time and gives me a list. As you, said, as you can see, it found 2,845 companies associated with the concept of fracking. Now, this isn't a flag that gets set. We don't set a bit next to the company saying they're a fracking company. This was done in real time by the same way that you would do it if you went into Google, read all those articles, and started writing down the company names, right, of each, each company that you found as you found the concept that you're after, right? So let's do one that's a little bit more, a little bit more uh, uh, complex. We'll do uh, sustainability initiatives, right? Now, this might be important <clears throat> for somebody trying to do that work. It found 694 results for sustainability initiatives. These are companies by the way, that are actively involved currently, right now, in sustainability initiatives. And again, the way it found them is it matches up that information graph, all those business signals that we have. It didn't know about sustainability initiatives before. We don't key anything into sustainability initiatives. It's figuring this out on the fly as I'm typing it in. It also takes into account time. So as companies come in and out of cycles, in and out of interests, it will weight them accordingly. So these companies have shown recent interest or recent evidence as being involved in sustainability initiatives versus one that maybe was uh, showed interest or was involved with it maybe a year or so ago. So it rates them and there's relevance associated with these. <clears throat> here, and just maybe one more here to show uh, that it's, it's not canned. I'll do a TEDx. <clears throat> 
And here we'll find 298 companies that have recently been involved or recently been associated with the concept of TEDx. Again, this is all real time. There's nothing canned here. This is hitting the cloud-based server that's looking at those 25 million companies and associating those. If I go and take a look at the actual signals themselves, <clears throat> and there are tons of them, right? These are all available to the users of our, of our system to begin to in a sense, build the DNA patterns that you would like to search for and match against, right? So let me go all the way to the bottom here and just call out a couple of these. Uh, workplace, environmentally friendly, uh, workforce, board of directors change, whether they're hiring, whether they've gone through layoffs, here's some industry signals, weather signals, whether there's local tornado or flooding risks. You can imagine the myriad of uses of this as companies are trying to select and maintain relationships with other companies, right? So let's cancel out of here, moving right along. <clears throat> let's do one that maybe is a little bit more timely. We had the talk this morning on, uh, on data security, right? On security in general. I'll search for the concept of data breach. <clears throat> now here are companies that are involved with or, or, or uh, have been uh, recently associated with the concept of a data breach. I'm gonna go in here and, and filter this down to say just those that are in the Fortune 1000. 27 of them. Oh, and look who jumps right to the top. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Target's been involved in a huge data breach problem here. Again, this was done on the fly. What this means is that Target is still in the news and still really re very relevant around the concept of data breach today. Of course, this would, they would have been scored even probably higher 30, 60, 90 days ago. I'm going to do one more here. <clears throat> to kind of string several of these together to show that you can, again, multiple signals, you can put them all together. Let's, uh, let's search for uh, cloud computing. <clears throat> and here's the companies that are involved in cloud computing. Again, it's global. You see the first one on there is Malaysia. They must have had some recent announcement or something that reinforced that fact. I want to take them, but I say I'm looking for one that's in the United States. So we'll do that filter here very quickly. There we go, right there. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to do is set up an office in Brazil. So let's look for these companies that are doing business in Brazil. That's a signal that I've pulled in here. There are 53 of them. But because it's in Brazil, I want to make sure that these companies are really scoring high on their environmentally friendly signal. So I'll go down here to the end. I pulled this signal in from earlier. You saw that big list that I pulled those in from. And let's say very likely, right? And there you go. So those are companies that are based in the United States, involved in cloud computing, uh, doing business in Brazil, and are equi environmentally friendly. Imagine, if you will, had to do that test or had to create that list manually, the amount of work effort it would take. As Charlie says, it's based on analysts all over the world that would pull that thing together over a period of days, weeks, if not months. And what we're doing is making all of that information available. So I know a lot of you are sitting out there going, well, if I've got a business, I understand how it's useful. But I want to back up a little bit <clears throat> and say, and close here real quick, with maybe something that might be applicable to the consumers in the room, and we're all consumers, right? And I, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to take credit for this democratization, democratization of big data. This was uh, uh, given to me by a good friend of mine, Ray Renteria. But it, it really does hammer home. Over the next 10 to 20 years, we're gonna have a data cold war, right? They're gonna be collecting information on you. Companies like us are gonna be collecting information on them. They'll escalate, we'll escalate, they'll defend, we'll defend as consumers. It's gonna go up, 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 right? But what that means is as that cold war escalates, as a consumer, you're gonna become an informed consumer, right? So imagine going to your e-commerce site, choosing the products of your choice, getting them from literally hundreds of different vendors, and then saying, I want only those products that come from uh, environmentally friendly companies, or maybe ones that are involved in local uh, nonprofit initiatives, and those kind of signals to narrow that list down, putting you in the power of who you want to do business with. So you've all heard of B2B, right? Business to business interaction. Of course, you've heard of B2C, that's them selling to you, right? But in the future, I believe that what we're going to have is through information like this, it's really going to turn, and maybe we're going to start becoming C to B. You're going to initiate the interaction. You're going to choose the businesses that you want to do business with, and then you're going to close the deal. And you're going to do that with information like this. So that was a point I wanted to leave you with, and uh, that's it. So from a high degree of difficulty, dive, everything worked good, and I think we're, I think we're good. Thank thanks, you. guys. Hank, thanks very much. <clears throat> Ted, thanks very much. <clears throat>